Well, terrific. Well, it's already nine o'clock and we're going to get uh, started relatively quickly. We will give people one minute to uh, to sign in to this uh, to this discussion. So uh, we will start swiftly around 901. So um, yeah, so we'll give it uh, a, a minute from here and before we start. All right, we are at uh, at nine nine oh one here in in Washington D.C. Good morning, uh, everyone who is here in the United States, and good evening to everyone who is in the uh, in the region in Asia. Thank you very much for tuning in on a Friday morning, or for for folks in in Asia, a Friday evening to join today uh, for this fascinating discussion about the Arakan Army. Um, and also its role and its relationship and its future with uh, Myanmar's resistance movement. Well, Arka Army has been one of the most fascinating actors in the country. I'm sure for anyone who follows uh, what is happening in, in Myanmar, uh, AA has, uh, has, has not been missing from the picture. Uh, Arka Army is one of the relatively young, relatively new uh, ethnic armed groups, EAOs, and it's has it has been operating primarily in the in the state of Rakai, and I think for the for the world as most uh, the best known fact about the Rakai uh, in the past decade or so has been the Rohingya issue, but at the same time we also have AAs that have been putting up putting an active resistance against the military government, and especially since uh, since the military coup. So uh, today we know uh, that. Well, for the for the resistance that has been there for two years, we know that the Arakan Army has been working with the resistance movement, collaborating with local PDFs, and in consultation with uh, uh, with the NUG, the interim shadow government that's currently in exile. And the people speculate that despite that AA has already had this choose, uh, this armistice with uh, with the Burmese military. AA will be playing a consequential role moving forward with uh, with Myanmar's resistance movement. So uh, for today, the discussion is going to be focused primarily and solely on AA, where it came from, why it has grown so quickly and became such a strong and consequential force, not only in the state of of uh, of, uh, of Rakhine, but also in the whole landscape of the resistance in in Myanmar. What is AA's strategy? What is AA's future vision? And what is AA's relationship with other EAOs, PDFs, as well as uh, the, the national unity, national unity government? So to discuss these um, important and consequential issues, we have had the pleasure to invite Mr. Jo Sanline, who is an independent journalist, an analyst, and also a researcher from Rakhine State himself. He has authored many featured uh, analytical articles on human rights, political transitions, and issues related to civil war, as well as the 2021 military coup in Myanmar. He was a guest contributing writer for a Pulitzer Center for the Pulitzer Center project uh, on intensive armed conflict in Western Burma, especially the Rakhine State during 2018 and 2020. He is a, a recipient of numerous rewards related to human rights and journalist, journalistic reporting in the, uh, in the country. And currently, he is pursuing a degree program in the Uni University of Hawaii. So we have to thank Joe because he is getting up at 2 in the morning at local time to join us for this, uh, for this fascinating discussion. Um, and also, just as a, uh, as a teaser, Joel has graciously agreed to write a paper for the Stimson Center on this very topic. What is AA? Where did AA come from? And where is AA going? And how is, is what is AA's role in the resistance currently and moving forward? So this paper is in the uh, final stage of copy editing, and we're hoping to release his paper next week on the Stimson website. 
So other than listening in, tuning in for the event today, please uh, keep an eye open for, for Joel's upcoming paper on this specific topic. So without that, uh, with that, without further ado, I will hand over the screen to Joel for him to explain to us um, all this fascinating aspect about the Arakan army. Thank you very much, Joel. The floor is yours. Um, thank you very much, uh, Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, good morning uh, from DC and a good evening from the yeah, South East country. Yeah, from my side, also in the meters, I can say like, you know, 3 a.m. some mornings. Yeah, I'm on my side. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, basically, I'm just, uh, so this the papers already, I think I started writing this early this year. Um, so I'm featuring the the fetter, you know, what the fetter might include. And the second, so why return in your kind state, why the conf, you know, the world return in your kind state. And the second, you know, the DAA approach to the uh, resistance movement. And yeah, the, the, basically, I'm just featuring, you know, the three patterns. So why, you know, you know the, the three patterns or AA. Uh, yeah, so first, I think the AA, so I think everybody know about very much about, you know, I think about uh, the AA group, you know, the where it was formed and also, uh, yeah, so it, where it is right now. So I can talk very much, you know, a bit about the AA. So AA was formed by uh, the 26 Arakani youth, Arakani is like a Rakhine group or Rakhine youth people. Uh, in 2009, April, uh, in Kashan State, like uh, on the border, Myanmar, uh, Chinese, uh, Myanmar, China, the border, in Kashan State, like a uh, northern bomber, uh, with this photo with this from the KIA, also another larger ethnic group in Myanmar. Um, so AA, like you know, they they basically their goal is uh to uh to uh yeah. To uh to save their uh, citizen nation and for the people of sort of kind stay and uh, actually the Kashan stay and Rakhine stay you know really be far away from like in the northern and the western Rakhine is like you know geographically western part of Myanmar so bordering to the Bangladesh and India uh you know a little bit closer but the uh. The 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 Kashan state is like you know on the border with you know the China China so it's really far away from you know their mobilization and um so uh they started in two thousand uh, early two thousand fourteen and two thousand fifteen and they start clash with uh, the Myanmar military in two thousand fifteen May. Uh, and also, the, so the, at, at the time, there was, you know, the small group and around just, I can say, like, you know, almost 1,000 group, like, you know, 1,000 and 2,000, around 1,000 to 2,000, around the tooth number. But, you know, within a decade, like after uh, just, you know, within almost like uh, 2022, like, and the five to six year, uh, just, you know, half, de half decade, actually, not very much. So they grew out so more than three thousand and uh, three thousand two and their aunt and also they also gain uh they also control very much in Rukhine State. So I figure out why a grew. So I simply make you know the four things and uh, the, the four pattern that made a grew. First, I think the our Kanis, the Rukhine revolutionary group, the in Rukhine also know a is the youngers. And also in you know previously 1970s, 1970s side, 1970s side, and also 1991, uh, also the, in Rakhine State, and 1980, yeah, 19, yeah, 1990, and 19, 1990, 1998, uh, they, they also have you know the grew you know previously, but you know they didn't grow out like AA. I I'm saying this is a big also like you know you and also the educated people a group of educated people gathering together and also talking about the the Rukhine star especially the a leader you can see the we can see the a two leader uh General Trauma and I he is right now I think 43 years old when he was from he's like over like you know I'm thirty five and and also for like another one uh, General. 
uh, like in another another one, yeah, very general Dr. Newton, oh, he was a medical doctor. And also, he was also from like a geographically southern Rakhine state. Yeah, in Rakhine state, we can see mostly the revolutionary group or like a you know, party leader from the northern Rakhine state, no southern Rakhine state. So the this like you know, all the time the no, northern Rakhine state, like people from northern Rakhine state influence Rakhine politi political, social, culture. They all the time they're historically influenced. Uh, you know, but the arc, I mean, they have, you know, Southern Rakhine State, the Northern Utah, he was grew and born in, in Jiaopu. Yeah, this is central, like Jiaopu is also, we know, like, you know, uh, the, uh, the economically and social and also politically very important town in the Southern part of Rakhine State. So it's made really, uh, uh, you know, inspire for the UN people and also getting together. Dick, he can, he is really good in mobilization. Also, he's also a good writer. And it's made, you know, the, they can catch up the people. Also, they are also youth and also they know the very much and also with strategy. And such as good leader, they can make, they can set her like, you know, Oregon during 2020. Just so in Rukhain's, the, the whole Rakhine revolutionary, like you know, 19, 19, uh, sorry, 18, oh, uh, sorry, yeah, 17, 17, 19, 17, 84, the Rakhine kingdom was, you know, occupied by uh, the bombings kingdom. Since then until today, the Rakhine revolutionary route, you know, fighting like, you know, almost 20, 240 years, but they don't set up such as you know drain arrogant grow arrogant drained or or something like the weight or recitor they didn't set us such a goal we didn't found that even i'm study the whole rukhai you know revolutionary such revolutionary periods and also year by year uh i didn't see such as you know the very strategy also they're talking about the people to get uh also uh so i so I found that in two, early 2017, the AA set up the, you know, the Arkan drain. And um, also the, the, all, all the people in Rakhine State, even who can, you know, he can use internet, just very early people, so older people, or others, you know, like this, you want the school that they know Arkan drain. Yeah, they can say our country, what our country is that they may, all, everybody, you know, at the times so they are real as either. And also join a lot of people, you know, army. So I one of my friends, uh, so who I'm when I in living in the Thailand, one of my friends told me at least, you know, uh 300 to at the time, 300 to you know, 700 people, you know, Rakai you and the people join AA in a day. Because they really inspired because the, we have drain and that make you know the people uh more. A life, I can say. So our country, this the our country in 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, all the people is talking around. Um, and even the they, they especially the our country, they basically they, they include uh the uh, be, uh you know administration structure in two base and uh, administration and also military base in Rakhine State. Uh, another reason is like you know they also talk the widow recitor. The widow recitor is like you know uh, is like you know they, they destroy like you know this you know uh, struggle for national liberation or restore Arakan uh, uh, sovereign to the people of Rakhine State. Actually, the Rakhine people are really motivated. They in the past they are really proud about almost two hundred twenty four years. But they really want to get back their country, you know, in their, in, you know, they are lose of the country at the, you know, in like 19, sorry, 1784. So, and today, the, the, the Arakan army leader decide the opportunity to bring the people. And also, they are talking, and uh, even uh, when they said they, they, they trying to become such a thing yeah another factor is uh, uh during like you know under the government uh a stuff fighting in rohan state uh, in 2018 and then like, in, into the you know early 2019 the conflict real intensive 
also the Kennedy government also you know the uh Kennedy government also uh the uh like uh allowed to allowed the military to use air stray and also so many things and even early earlier 2018 there was also event in the Mrau. the event was uh the uh and the date or yeah 200 34 anniversary of Arakan lost Arakan Kingdom, the loss of Arakan Kingdom in Mrau. And the the even was uh actually in uh you know the even was actually make it to talk the daughter Emo, the uh, you know the prominent uh, the politician, also another one the, the writer. Uh but the the government shut down and then there's a thousands of people still protest uh, at the night. And and the military should at, at the time no military actually the police should directly to the kind people at least twenty people were died and the severe injury is that they they are failing even you know they 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 even they are joining about you know the laws of their Kenyan they are they were they were you know arrested even also killed by the you know member military member government and that thousands. Thousands of people, you know, start think about. Uh, I think I can say at the time, uh, a lot of young people joined AA in 2018, and the conflict really intense. So such a factor make a really a good or earlier. And the last one, yeah, strategically uh, we can think about a also really good relationship with the Northern Alliance, and Northern Alliance or the KIA and also China. Uh, China, uh, you know, the border, the you know, especially the who are related to Chinese, you know, government, especially we can say USA and also uh, the MNDDA, TNLA, and so the the, the group got uh, the group gained, you know, really good support from the such as people, and uh, I mean, I can say that you know, in two thousand early earlier two thousand twelve, the the government at the time that uh, uh, the president thing saying. Term restrict AA and MDA TNLA because of their you know uh uh their few number of soldiers or also they are also there is there was no fighting very much at the time and they 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 I just remembering if they want to side they have to uh they have to you know uh they have to uh, they have to get out their impact and also just game the politics and the maybe political party but Started, they make alliance. Uh, in two thousand, yeah, in, the in two thousand sixteen, they start alliance. A become the Northern Alliance member. The the Northern Alliance member. A I mean, the TNLA. The three groups are combined together. The the four groups are combined together. Some fighting against, it. and this may be really good struggle. And also, uh, at the same time, the A also really got uh really got the support from the YouTube SA. Uh, like you know, weapon also a technique is for because of uh, the A become F A and C C. Recently, they are meeting in you know USA and USA you know quarter in person. So the the four group, what I see, they really uh the the four group make you know A stronger in you in a decade, very much stronger in the country, the powerful force, and yeah. It, it, yeah, actually, the past two years they really fight and uh, also very intensely. Uh, yeah, three almost yeah two weeks before the uh the national election in twenty twenty, uh they agreed to ceasefire to rehold election because at the time almost uh seventy five percent of the high population border were cancelled by uh by uh, by government. And uh, they really want, uh, yeah, almost yeah nine townships and uh other, other, another five township we are partially considered the whole nine township we are considered by election. So this one never happened for in Rakhine State. And uh, uh, the the military and a agreed to fire, uh, just to remember before military coup. Um, so a start working after military coup. Their uh administration also. Uh, like judiciary and just something they take they start they start you know start taking 
uh, the government role in Rakhine State. Uh, it was like an uh, earlier 2021 after coup, you know, soon after the military take in. We can see after six months later, in you know, August in 2021, uh, 2021, the AS they already control, uh, you know, two, you know, yeah, two thirds of uh, the state, and also they have really set a uh, uh, local administration, especially the AA control area is a uh, control area, mostly control area, rural area, most of the urban area, the city area controlled by hunter right now yeah so um this is like you know how the a managed the, in the, to get in rukai uh also came into rukai uh another last last part in my papers i wrote about the a approach to the you know national resistance movement i found that there's we have four uh i can summarize uh, you know the approach like with the four fed for action First, the AA thing, the party competition in Rakhine State, and the second, collaboration with ethnic aligned to fight against Hunter, and the second, assist to, uh, uh, and assist to like a resistance group, and for uh, to establish a relationship with NUG. And first, I think, as I said, after cool. after six months, cool, the AA said they already control two thirds or. Uh, like I mean, de facto control to that or kind state. They are also ruling and regularly running out. Most or even today in the city, like you know, city like Saitwe, the capital city of Rakhine state, in like the city of Mrau, and the mostly northern Rakhine state. Uh, the, even the city right today, they are re really influent over their powers also administrative in the Mrau's. After cool, almost one year after cool, I talked. You know, one of my friends, one of my friend, also I'm talking some people in Mrau and also Chauto. So the police station, the military police station, also judiciary already stopped. They didn't run any single things because almost people that complain the A U L A code, also the complain A U L A police. Really for every single star, so the people really rely on the ULA stuff. And today they are working on that. Um, so they they have really really competition, and also there are so many. We can see in April, uh, last year twenty twenty April to until August before they start fighting return uh, fighting. They also were a huge number of so arrested. At least three hundred where people were arrested and by military because of uh, their working with AA was for to AA in Rakhine State. In like, you know, within two months, the military arrested 300 and today, today almost you know, 200 were, I think yeah, almost 100 were in jail state. So two, almost 200, were, uh, almost, yeah, there are um, most of the people who were, were relief recently. Um, and the second, I think the AA approach to uh, AA approach to uh, the resistance movement to for uh, to make uh, to start working and also to uh, fight against military. Uh, I can say here, although AA and the military they have uh, some kind of relationship or like a ceasefire, they they didn't trust each other. They have huge concern one another. Because AA action, also the military action. So this all the, just just you know recording the military spoken process. AA is not the same like other ethnic group. They all the time he mentioned previously, he is not like the same as other ethnic group. Even the ceasefires or even the, you know fighting, it's it's not the same way in you know, other ethnic group. Uh, that's why I think they didn't trust. Um, A also think only the military have to. Their, 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 uh, their, their enemy is only the military, the common enemy, the military. So they start working. Uh, even after military coup, we can see, um, you know, in March, uh, like you know, a month after military coup, start fighting in Kashan State, uh, alongside with uh, KIA, they start fighting in Park and also other area. Money's or area is stuff hitting, but AA didn't use their name. They they are just sign. They are just participating again. Uh, fighting 
be signed with the lion even until today we can see so many uh you know fighting in northern northern Burma, northern Myanmar, and Shen State uh with MDD and TNLA they are alongside fighting so they 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 basically they approach it to you know pressure uh also to weaken the, their their enemy and the first uh the third one is uh like you know to for uh yeah to to work and then uh also yeah, to work uh, and also to support technically and uh, militarily to the ethnic you know and resistance and we can see more than 10 uh as more than 10 resistance group are trained by AA. Many schools like in the school down, BPLA, and even, you know, we can see also strategically a training like Iyawudi Makwe is really bordering to the Bangladesh, sorry, is bordering to the Rakhine State. Uh, Iyawudi and Makwe, also Shen State, some group were trained by Shen State. It's strategically a training resistance group and northern, northern Palmer. Uh, at least, uh, I can say, I, yeah, I can say, you know, roughly like, you know, at least 20, uh, 15 group we are training, uh, are training uh, and uh, getting training by AA techniques for, uh, but it's really hard to define very exact, exact number. They really, they didn't express anything uh, in the public, but uh, in, yeah, they are like, uh, yeah, I think April 11 last year, they, uh, first time they disclose their you know the statement with you know uh their uh their their yeah yeah their alliance like you resist you resistant group yeah especially those groups are like McQuay, Yawdi, and also like you know Shan State they're strategically bordered to Rakhine State the air training uh and getting small and also they are really good you know, relationship with AA and the last one is and UG, so we can only first time uh, 2021 after a year uh, military coup 2022 uh, January they first time they talk probably the first time they um they they had meeting but they didn't express anything about what they discussed in the first time and UG but actually they have a really good relationship. And also some stuff they are working together, but that but they didn't express anything. But I think strategically the AA really want to make a pressure through the NUG. They are even they, are, they yeah, you can see yeah, you know, I'm working on UG, but they didn't say anything, any evidence. So the military can make any pressure, but they have to think about the the a also really good relationship with the military is make military more worrying and also or get and uh, get get pressure um so this is why until like you know although right now AA are also police uh you know and in Rukhain state all until yeah sorry all those uh, you know AA and and uh, you know the military in a place with a ceasefire until today in the Rukhain state uh but Technically, the both uh, both are really making own, you know, re uh, uh, reinforcement. Uh, also, re uh, also mobilizing food, you know, food. Also, they are making, you know, preparing world actually in Rakhine State. Even we can see have uh, no fighting, but the bulk are preparing war. The the you know the warless situation. Yeah, yeah. Even uh, even yeah, uh, see right now last last during this this month like it's 15 day the military warning the people the the people uh, especially Rakhine resident uh notice for the aa notice for the you know ulaa administration and the second they are also uh collect food and also recruit uh also they are mobilized they are you know stand and usual especially they they, they are prepared so recently, one was the local media report, the military recording the food, also other, you know, requirements, and necessarily, uh, you know, collecting inform uh, and necessarily, you know, collecting for the year for the preparing, such as preparing what we can see. Uh, that's why I can see uh, that way. And another thing is like election of what AA stands for. 
uh, it, it is time for uh, especially it is just, just spread that you know the election doesn't uh, change any Rakhine people situation, but uh, they didn't make clear. That's why he said uh, that the a spoken person said whether spoke or you know ag agree with the election doesn't matter for the uh, then also Rakhine people. I think this in this situation a should make a clear statement, but he haven't made a clear statement yet. Um, thank you very much. So I maybe I'm talk a lot. So yeah, I really welcome everyone questions. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for that very clear genesis of AA's uh, from its origin to its political aspiration to its uh, strategy currently. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of questions in the in the Q and A, but um, if I can use the purview as a moderator and and ask you. Um, some first questions. I think the first question I'd like to ask is that AA has had a, well, I, I would call it, it was a difficult path coming to where it is today, but it has done fairly well in the Rakhine stage. But moving forward, what do you see as AA's biggest challenge or challenges? Is it funding? Is it people support? Is it arms? Or is it a realistic political agenda because independence of Rakhine state um inspiring as it might sound uh I think the, the the realistic aspect of that is always questioned so uh what is AA's biggest challenge um yes I think the AA the biggest challenges and the first I can see uh the morally uh, I think they maybe really have to look at it because as Rakhine is like a strategically military win never let you know a go to control the Rakhine state because they have you know the Russia right now the Russia is inventing you know, China is a lot of you know major project invented China and also the India multi collateral project and so many you know like important things and even for another one is the Rohingya crisis Rohingya you know genocide yeah we have we also have to think about that the military won't never let go you know a to control Rakhine state uh, this is uh, because I think the the bigger challenge is uh, you know how they have to uh, think about for the people, especially Rakhine is so isolated. In the previous round, I see that what the China just is uh, facing uh, mostly August to uh, August to November twenty twenty, almost four months. Rakhine people really suffer. You know they are they feel the food shortage. The humanitarian aid. I mean, Rakhine people. I mean, the who, who you know the the people who are living in Rakhine state, regardless of race and you know uh, the genders or religious, the all people is what I mean. They really you know uh, experience food shortage and also the price and commentary. Mostly, the people in Rakhine state rely on the uh, the the central bomber. You know uh, the uh, the the price, especially food. The, um, like you know, daily commentary, commodity. There's really, really huge difference. Uh, you know, the challenges for them. Yeah, after the conflict started in August, the military shut down all you know highway road and you know everything. Then they don't have they don't they didn't access you know food, especially for IDP. So it's a huge concern because in Rakhine State it's not the same as like you know um, Thai and Myanmar border. The Bangladesh and India, they never, they, 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 they didn't allow to, uh, do the uh, humanitarian aid, and this is the real challenges. What I see, and the second, uh, uh, the second, they also have you know huge pressure or like you know the geographically and also politically, like they also have you know some kind of Chinese influence over their group. Uh, they also really good relationship with them. Chinese or Chinese governments also really good relationship with the military. They also brother around for years. And the second, and we can also see the like an international community like in the Rohingya genocide. The West uh, country they are also really proud and Rohingya state. They are also very closely more than other state. They are really watching, and they really care about in the matter. In this, you know, the two, uh, you know, the the, the, the superpower country, they they have a huge, you know, they are huge pressure and these these two things. And the second, they 
I I can say they they don't worry about their you know the recruit you know soldier. They have very much you know I can say more than three thousand uh, soldier they have. And but you know they may they may have a feel like you know air scratch like you know um, the it's not easy to book you know in the market I, I mean in market I mean blue market it's, it was as easy to buy especially air scratch it's maybe really harder. And the funding, regarding funding, they they I can see they make uh, they may not much worry about the funding. Funding because of the funding, they had funding, they can recruit also, they can, you know, uh, technically equate for the you know the soldier. So what I, I can see that tech, uh, you know uh the huge amount of Rakhine Mangra in especially in Rakhine State, only like you know one only like you know three million people or total but most of the people living in uh like you know immigrant people Rakhine people are like you know Thai and Malaysia and and also the American also other country they really for the AA like a monthly daily basis this for the you know they they are they are making because of the the AA performance and also they also really such as go uh such as things um Another one is uh, a won't worry about you know uh the people's vote. Uh they they um I can say like you know 90% or 90% of the people of from Rakhine State and uh, people Rakhine State for AA. And maybe another 10 percent maybe who are working with the military. Okay, that sounds really interesting. And you mentioned the, the challenges include the fact that Rakhine is so isolated. So when it's under the attack by the military, it's very difficult for them to get support. From either external sources or from uh, P PDFs or EAOs in other in other parts of the country, and the uh, the influence of China, the great power competition, um, especially China's relationship with the TM uh, with the is uh, is is affecting that how China develops its relationship with AA. Uh, I I really like your answer about the uh, the funding source because we we hear that a lot that where does AA get its funding. And the answer that we hear is that, well, it's the support from the Rakhine people, not only Rakhine people from inside Rakhine, but also Rakhine people from all over the world. Um, that all sounds terrific, but we, we do have a question from the from the audience. And for the audience, please do feel uh, putting your question in the Q&A uh, using the Q&A function. AA's main sources of funding, um, I guess people do have questions that for AA to sustain, to support an armed resistance against the, uh, against the military, it takes a lot of money, right? And yes. to support the, the thousands of soldiers and the weapons and the arms that they need, that's also a lot of money. Just relying on the donation does not seem to be a, well, it's, it sounds great, but in reality, it doesn't sound very practical, does it? Uh, yes. So, so when when I say like you know they rely on donation, so but I I I can say I'm living in the uh, in Bangkok for you know almost ten year, and I've met a lot of you know the people, and also in the Malaysia so I have you know talk with them. It, it, they have really good strategy, you know like you know just so we can say. Even though we can say donation, but in the Rakhine is just like you know the test, the the it make everyone maybe who are living in, inside or also you know outside the country, especially in the Malaysia and Thailand, the Rakhine Mangrat, there's a huge numbers. They regularly, you know, support regularly. Or for example, if they got, I just I met you know many people, they got you know five uh, thousand bed per month. They they donate four thousand bed per month, such as way. Uh, they really donate. Then they they really make it such as donation. Just no, just you know maybe okay maybe ten percent. No, just not ten percent. Some people they only they are left relying on you know donating to AA. The whole they are you know studying you know in like. A, a star in a star entering the uh, Thailand in 2012 around since then until today they really supported 
I can say 100% so they are I'm flying in the sport in, in, in Thailand. There's thousands of there's I can say in Thailand, Rakhine, Mangra, at least. Yeah, I can say at least 10,000 around more than that. And a lot, a lot of people. Well, I, I joined in the Bangalore and just remembering they have also like a football festival. I never see, even though in Mangsa, I in Rakhine stay, I never see such a group of people. There are at least 5,000 people attend the festival in Thailand. In the East, only the, you know, the Bangalore, the one quarter. They also have make, you know, such as things and also very well strategy. And they have regularly test testing and doing that. Yeah, this is, you know, so, so intense, actually, very much interesting. Yeah, it's maybe take time. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how, whether that is a sustainable uh, fundraising strategy, because just relying on people's donation for armed resistance, that, that seems to be a little, uh, well, a little unsustainable or fragile. And I'm, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that this strong support was a strong cohesion from the Rakhine people to, to AA, because that relates to another question in the, in the, in the Q&A, um, which is, if Rakhine people has such strong cohesiveness and they support AA, and AA earlier on has said that it supports a, an independent Rakhine state, right? It's the, the political goal, the ambition is that Rakhine will one day become independent. Then does AA still support the current NUG or does it still support the current resistance movement, which is not necessarily aimed at the independence of Rakai, or in other words, using the question from the chat box, what is AA's position on the Federal Democratic Charter? Um, yeah, so what I see that uh, when we talk in the independent of Rakhine state, this is their ultimate goal, their political, this is their, their ultimate goal. Uh, they they also said in 2019, General Trump and I talk, uh, interview uh, interview with uh, Irabudi, in 2009, they want like a confederation state, like a war state. Actually, uh, what I see, the like in, in the political sphere, they have you know bargaining power. If they talk, you know, we want this, like at least we want the confederation. And that if you can provide the confederation, we will forward, you know, working for the, our independence. I mean, like you know, we will try our best, you know, our own self, such as you know, I think political bargaining power. Um, and the like, you know, UG uh, federal charter, uh, it's really hard to say it, it, it neighbor Israel and that. Uh, but I'm saying they literally agree on, you know, some point about, you know, like overthrow military also gain. But the NLD and even what I also wrote, you know, one piece story about AA can uh, win a competition, like, you know, working with NUGs. Uh, also, uh, the military and the boat, both won't provide a competition. It's really hard. Uh, the competition step, even the poor military, they were never, uh, you know, allowed to uh, receive the competition status like, like what? Uh, it, it won't never get through negotiation with the military. And and UG is more likely, uh, but the like I'm, I can say, and the uh. Most of like uh, the bombings politician, they even they you know after the, you can see after they gain power twenty twenty five to twenty twenty, they never talk about uh you know even set determination for you know ethnic people, yeah, but right now they are talking about set determination and just about they won't launch you know competition state in the kind state, mm. so, uh, uh, but on the federal charter. Uh, for most of, I can say most of the kind of people are really spread and they dislike and you know and UG federal uh, charter at the moment. But I don't know what it stand for. I can say I, I only I can see the kind of people really criticize on the first time uh, on and UG you know really the charter because they just like you know uh like you know I mean centralized and also unitary most unitarized you know the state and also centralized they didn't very much the power to the state that's why they dislike uh yeah the, the federal charter I can say most of the kind of politicians dislike uh the, the NUG federal charter because of the power sharing mm. state. 
Thank you. Thank you for that answer. That's very important. So they they criticize the uh the, the NUG's Federal Democratic Charter because they don't believe it has given Rakhine the rights or the autonomy, the power sharing that it uh that it de deserves. Well, that has been a long-standing issue between the between the Rakhine and the uh and the central government of Myanmar for some time. Um, what do you think about the informal ceasefire? Do you think it's going to is going to continue, or what will lead to this ceasefire to fail or to collapse? Uh, yeah, so current uh, informal ceasefire, I think, it, it, what I see is like, you know, there's two things. First, it, it, I want to uh, keep going with uh, the ceasefire. Uh, and also, they really want to start working at the same time for their administration, uh, also judicial process. They really want to extend. And but the military, uh, yeah, recent the recent ceasefire in November the 2022, uh, they have you know basically three fed. They have ceasefire, uh, like you know, okay, to allow the humanitarian aid to the Rakhine people. And the second, the military have to withdraw their checkpoint in through Rakhine State, and also relieve all registration of the you know, road and you know highway road and other you know part of the Rakhine State that military restraint. Um, the the uh, the the third one, uh, the military have the military, uh, yes, I agree with uh, so. And like the military agree with a no distrust with you know a uh, judiciary or administration process in Rakhine State don't distrust, uh, but uh, the very fluence uh, after Horsia March the military star you know in Chao Phu uh, Chao Phu especially Southern Rakhine State Chao Phu Tandui Tongo uh, the military uh, you know won and also Ash. Uh, the Rakhine resident, no to sport A and no walking. This is, you know, such first time this is, you know, military start violating their, you know, oral agreement. And the second, uh, the military, you know, start, you know, moving, also preparing food, also, you know, res in the recently we can see, uh, and can see in Chowdo, the, 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 uh, the military open, uh, the checkpoint again. So, between two groups, uh, I think the ceasefire is only on the, you know the ceasefire. But the two groups, you know, in the real computation in the ground, their their power. Uh, because they, I I I talked you know previously, they don't try each other. They maybe they are preparing for you know another war. Maybe this time more than you know intense than previously. Yes. If that is going to happen, well, we know that the military sought this ceasefire with AA also because it was under a lot of military pressure from other fronts in Shan State, in, in Sagan, in, uh, in, in Kachin State. So some have, have commented that this was a this was a military's tactic to pacify AA for the time being so it can focus on the PDF in other regions until it has the time to turn around and, and take care of AA. So it sounds like what you are saying is that if the ceasefire is going to fall apart, it would be because the military will have regained its strength and wanted to target uh, and want to target AA again. So AA is unlikely to, to be the initiator of the next round of war. Is that what you're saying? Um, so I think this may be two uh, different possibilities. Uh, first, uh, the from the military perspective, so the military look AA just their real enemy, and today they are using in their you know their paper is like in a target also uh, the insurgency just something they are writing in there. Also, they are also talking. They also have uh like you know the unlawful association. The military, uh, you know the the military have a relief. You know the unlawful association the AA. So everyone who are related with AA have to, you know, they, they can be arrested with an flow situation. Uh, so a, the military look at a, they are, the crew, even, you know, fighting in Rakhine State, the AA also really who sporting, you know, across the country, also really good relationship with, you know, NUG. They, they know that and they see that. Uh, 
they 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 may you know probably think about that you know one may be probably fighting in Rakhine State you know, sooner or like you know now or sooner sometime and from ASI a also you know they also very clear the military is only the enemy or the, the there and then uh, also they they say all the time they will make as much as the alliance mm. about no military oh. uh, but the ceasefire even though this is in place they are just i can say uh preferring the world also the making coalition and, and some kind of just like you know their two perspectives are really different so, yeah it's really hard to you know say one thing is about uh, yeah the AA political goal I you know previously talked the military will never allow the like you know to achieve the paper you know a uh, political goal through the negotiation uh, the only a have you know then also known that only the unpass like you know unresistant and struggle the only the answers for the AA to receive their political goal so it's hard to say but the war is coming we don't know who is going to start it but it will happen um, so in, in the AA's combat with military operation against the military, what is the primary um, tactic? Well, what is the primary military strategy? Is it jungle uh, guerrilla warfare? Um, or is it uh, what type of uh, what, what type of military tactics that AA yearly yearly adopts? And and the following question is: Does AA have support from other countries? I know that you mentioned that AA has very close ties with the Northern Alliance, um, and people have well have commented that AA has support from UWSA, and UWSA has very close ties with with China. So does AA receive indirect support from say China, uh, or AA receives support from? I don't know. It's uh, I know that it's as far, but uh, from Thailand or from uh, the neighboring India or Bangladesh. So two questions. One is on the AA um, military strategy, and second one is on foreign support of AA. You you talked about the kind people support, but how about foreign countries? Um. Yes. Yeah, so I think the the AA military strategy, yeah, like you know the. Uh, like a rival group, you know, in the Burma, just using like a color of warfare. Uh, they, 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 they will open, you know, war like mostly rural area and also pressure the military. Um, just that way, I think, just normal way. Uh, just the you know other, you know, what other, you know, the an organization do, uh, an organization do in other parts of the country, and and the and the second question is. Uh, we can see obviously the right now, especially uh, before coup, the A didn't uh, A didn't have a good relationship with the Indians and Bangladesh. Uh, but after coup, especially a years and two years right now, uh, India and also A also have some you know the good relationship. We can see very obviously. The, you know the 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 India is also talking open to the kind the politician and also one uh the India uh, the uh a spoken person uh, Ken Tuka also mentioned it in his press conference uh in the last year August um uh, the also he also met India government so one or two times and just remember about I have to check uh he also met India government talking about the Matai project and Bangladesh so for Bangladesh side, the Bangladesh and especially Indians are you know playing ball, uh, you know, and the Bangladesh as well. Bangladesh also really want to, uh, especially uh, they really want to start working on the uh, Rohingya repatriation. But and uh, right now they are working with the military, uh, military delegation arriving uh, in the Bangladesh. I think right now and just working, and but. Who, yeah, only the Bangladesh also now without AA participation and this is maybe hard uh, for Rohingya people, even for them to set it in Rakhine State. Uh, I can say, yeah, they have some kind of relationship, but India's and the Bangladesh government never expressed they have to maintain with AA. I see. So it is gaining some traction with uh, with with India, India and, and Bangladesh. Um, so for the future relationships, 
uh, like between AA and, and Bangladesh and India, do you see this relationship on an upward trajectory? That do you anticipate that India and Bangladesh will continue to play this play this balanced diplomacy, maintain its ties with AA, but also work with the military? So it's going to be a, a continued balanced approach, or do you think that AA is going to gain some more support? Um, I think so. It depends on you know the how you know maybe it depends on you know the the like current ceasefire program or maybe another you know water cami. I think it depends on it's maybe the same or uh, what happened next actually because the the two group won't go like you know just such as you know tensions or just something. It's really hard uh, for that as well. Um, for like you know India's and the Bangladesh, I think they may be good. They may be take a good relationship with the military as well because uh, they think, especially uh, the Bangladesh and India, they usually think the only authority, like you know, the legitimate authority, are like you know the the military historically and even today. That's why they are communicating. You can you you can check you know the India government and Bangladesh government authority. They never. They haven't met with you know any UG government in public. I mean, they never show any picture. They are meeting with any UG. And for India also, they also historically discussed with you know the Rakhai and also other uh you know resistant group with India. Yeah, it sounds a lot like uh like like China's strategy too, that they have good relationship with the military, but they also have the EAOs on China's border. So it's, uh, it's, it's quite a, a, a mixed picture. So if I may ask you to, to give us some forecast or just look into the future, how do you see the AA's relationship with, with NUG will look like? Will they work together? Will they um, have more dispute about, for example, this Federalist, Federalist Charter? Um, will they... Because it's the essential question is the cohesiveness of the resistance movement, which AA is a part of, right? And NUG claims to be the leader of that uh, resistance movement. But it sounds like that AA and NUG also have a lot of disagreements coming to what the future of the country and the future of Rakhine State should look like. So if you can uh, predict or give us some sense of where do you think this relationship will go, or maybe they share the common enemy, which is Burmese military, and that's significant enough until the resistance is victorious. Um, so I think another fact, uh, the A approach to resistance and also a good relationship with the uh, uh, the uh, NUG, uh, what I see is uh, the A approach to like, you know, re supporting and resistance, you know, I, I mean, like, you know, there's so many groups are supporting and one, it's maybe it's maybe speed, you know, after you know, maybe revolution waned and one day speed, yes, it also have you know good relationship with the other group. And technically, it's maybe more power to the speed side by side with you know an UG. And UG can say, I'm just you know the leaders or the resistance group. And also they are only the only the with hold the spring power because this is strategically a think about what I see. They make a lion also right now, you know, including like Northern Lions and other you know group, at least you know, maybe nearly 40 to 50 uh, you know unresistant group, they may have a lion, it may have a lion with right now. Because those group have the powers and also they are it also suggests, you know. A uh, good leader for them, also a good supporter. They when they bring uh, on the table, the, you know, this experience also just what they doing maybe more thinkable for the NUG, uh, the, you know, leader. And even not only NUG, other like you know, uh, like KIO, uh, even KIO also KIA, TNLA, you know, KNU, all the group people maybe think about the share the future and also share in the powers of and very, you know, the possible way and reasonable way, what I think. They, they, yeah, it's just like, you know, if they, they if they, the revolution wind, they may really get, you know, more, I can say the, the country uh, future is maybe more, more so peaceful and also they, they, they wish it like, you know, uh, like share the common and also under, you know, the federal, federal charter, yeah, federal state. I see. So there's still uh, the, the positive uh, possibility 
that they will work out this uh, this this difference and will be able to uh, will be able to move forward. Well, we are at the end of our hour. Uh, is there anything last? Any last things that you wish to say about AA and about uh, AA's future and AA's uh, resist role in the res uh, in the resistance movement? I think you have already covered a lot of ground. And thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh... Yeah, what I see, we have to wait and see, uh, you know, the Asian as well, uh, how they we think about, uh, especially the A thing all the time, the very like you know realistic way. Uh, it's sometimes I'm just, uh, I might say, uh, just you know, it's really hard to get you know what uh, you know the A may do next, uh, because uh, the the the, uh, the the groups you know the leaders are also youth and also you know very like you know realistic he's also very realistic uh this is probably anything and can anything you know can happen anytime uh under you know the, uh, the situation uh so that's why the military and you know, even NUGs or other groups are really care i think what i see at the moment uh, especially the military also really care about you know with the ceasefire with AA. Um, yeah, we have. We, like I said, we have to see, you know, wait and see situation. And uh, yeah, I would also continue working on that and writing about, you know, what is there happening and uh, yeah, the situation about Rakai and yeah, the unresisted movement in Myanmar. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. And and we look forward to working with you on your future publications and also future events on on the Rakhine stage and also the the resistant movement in Myanmar. Um, well, thank you so much, Joel, for joining us today. We know it's, uh, it's, it's really early in Hawaii, and we thank everybody uh, in uh, on the East Coast or the West Coast for getting up early to uh, to listen to uh, tune in for this event. Uh, and please keep your eyes open for the uh, upcoming paper by Joel that discuss, uh, discusses AA, its genesis, and its future, uh, which will be co coming up in uh, on the Stimson website next week or the following week. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, have a very good day and the meeting is adjourned.